soldiers of Reddit who have faced child soldiers in combat, what has been your, or your comrades, experience or experiences, any unique challenges you, or others have faced? My buddy said that kids would often run up to the convoy trucks in Iraq and some of the guys would give them candy, even though they weren't supposed to. On one such occasion, a kid tossed two live grenades into the truck. One of the grenades was quickly tossed away to explode without issue, the other was not as easy to get rid of, and ended up amongst the group of kids. The guys giving out candy were put on cleanup duty. No idea what the approximate age of the children was, and not many other details. It was pretty rare to get him drunk enough, and in a mood, to talk about any of it. There was a kid sitting on an overpass in Iraq, dropping Molotov cocktails trying to make it into the gunner's hatch of all them rats in our convoy. 50 calorie gunner saw him and cut him in half. He was probably 10 years old or so. My platoon sergeant was on his third tour when he joined our unit heading to the sandbox. I'll probably never forget the time he just dropped in casual conversation, in a joking manner, you can take home a lot of things from your time in service, but I'd rather not have been the first guy in my neighborhood with 3 confirmed kills. And he just kept talking from there, like he didn't want to give anyone else a chance, to question what he just said. It worked. I never asked. End of our tour, nothing really happened the whole time, he was got comfortable enough with us to tell some stories from his past tours. One of them involved meeting a 13 year old Iraqi boy awkwardly trying to carry an RPG in the suburbs of Baghdad, and the sergeant just up and running at the kid, screaming at the top of his lungs, firing his weapon as fast as he could in the air, scaring the kid enough for him to drop the RPG and run. I never saw his file to see if he had a bronze or silver star. But I think he earned something that day. Kid was likely just being used as a mule to bring gear and ammo to insurgents, so he wasn't likely a threat himself, but he could have been shot for carrying a weapon by someone to quick on the trigger. Sergeant intervened, but chasing someone through the streets is likely to get you isolated and shot, so he had no idea what happened to the kid. My ex was British Royal Marines and fought child soldiers. This was 10 plus years before I met him, but he had horrible nightmares and on a couple of occasions broke down crying while drunk. He never told me everything in a coherent start to finish way, but from what I've pieced together he killed one or more child soldiers protecting his unit. It catapulted him into self-loathing. He got awarded a medal for it, refused to accept it, but was forced to attend the ceremony with members of the royal family. Only got through it by drinking himself into a stupor and then spent the next 4-5 to five years with a serious coke habit before being able to transition into more moderate alcoholism. So yay. I can't speak for others and thankfully I never had to pull the trigger but I always gave them a lot more time in the crushes vs an adult. There were several times they ran up unexpectedly, waved a gun in our direction, or just generally acted like they were going to attack us. I'd put them in my sights and beg god, please don't make me do this. Thankfully, every time, they'd stop what they were doing. If it were an adult aiming a weapon at us, they'd get zero thought. I remember the ones I didn't pull the trigger on so much more than the ones that I did. I'm sure a lot of soldiers would disagree with me, but I sleep just fine at night. Not me, but a fraternity brother and close friend who passed away told me a story once about his second deployment in the Middle East. He was an army ranger, army special ops, and was a breacher slash first one enduring all breaches because he had balls of steel and insane reflexes. He told me that he killed a kid once who couldn't have been more than 14 years old. He said the action wasn't what haunted him, he said it was how it happened. He was leading the team through an alleyway to a door that led to a suspected illegal weapons cache, and he held his breaching shotgun up to the door and gave count, and as soon as he was about to breach, the door swung open and a kid leaned out through the door with an AK-47 pointed outward. So he blasted the kid in the face with the breacher shotgun, and he said the look of surprise on the kid's face was what bothered him, a mix of surprise and inevitability of his doing. There's no running from a fucking shotgun blast to the face. I was with the SADF back in Angola, my platoon and I had few brushes with them plan. We mostly met poorly trained militias armed with old Soviet gear. But I remember on one occasion, we were entering a village, where we were supposed to get water. 
the village, if we can even call it that, had around 10 to 15 actual house, and of those at least half were abandoned. I remember that our spotter yelled out to us, telling us to get prepared. Our lieutenant saw something that visibly shocked him, and called out our sergeant. We received the order, to issue warning shots south of our position. That's when we all saw it, around 30 to 40 kids with guns bigger than them with a few adults who seemed to be their coess. Our sergeant ordered us to target the officers, and we did, even after all 6 of their adults were car the kids still continued to shoot, with no control of their fire. After maybe 5 minutes the order came, fire at will. I don't remember if the entire platoon opened fire, I remember I did. In the moment, I didn't quite think about who I was shooting, I don't think anyone did. All we saw was an enemy eager to send us home in body bags. We saw enemy uniforms, nothing else. Nobody said anything afterwards. My comrades probably all willingly forgot this, or justified it by saying something like I saw them. It's very easy to analyze the situation, if you weren't there. But when you're in the moment, you forget that the ones on the other side are just like you. So to sum it all up, I opened fire without thinking too hard about it. Don't know if I regret it, I just know I don't like remembering. Spent a lot of time with my friend's brother, when he would come back from his tours. He confided in me, that he had taken a kid's life, because in his mind it could be them, or it could be me. On a previous tour he witnessed a child with a bomb, strapped to him hug a fellow soldier and blow them up. A lot of his stories were very hard to listen to, and it was clear to me, that he did not return as the same person, that I knew growing up. Didn't actually pull the trigger on the kid, but was ready to convoy through a village and the kid reaches into a pocket and pulls out what looks like a grenade and tries to throw it. I hesitated. The grenade slipped out of his hand behind him. It was damn rock. I was ready to kill a kid over a fucking rock. If it was a grenade and he managed to throw it, my hesitation could have meant my buddy's lives. I'm glad it was rock. I knew a guy who served, and we got drunk one night, and I was the idiot who asked, what's the worst thing you saw, while serving over there? He got quiet, and got this far away look in his eyes, and then he told me this story. I was in an armored convoy and we were in the middle of a patrol, but it had been a pretty normal day. The school buses that were used, were pretty much just minivans, so the only way, to identify it was a school bus was usually the sticker they placed on the side. Anyways the area we were, in was known for placing, copper on top of their bombs, because when a bomb ignites the copper liquefies, and basically goes through anything. Even our tanks can't block that shit. So we are on patrol and a bomb goes off about 10 feet to our, right and I figured I was a dead man. Right then a school bus drove by, and provided cover from the blast so only one of our soldiers was hurt but not seriously. However that school bus was blown to hell. Most of the kids died, but the worst part was the driver of the school bus survived who was a middle aged woman. But her legs and arms had been blown away from the blast, so we had to drive her to the nearest hospital. I'll never forget her screams, especially because she had to sit under my legs, since we had no room. She screamed and screamed. But mostly I won't forget the arms and legs of the children, that had been destroyed from that blast. It will haunt me forever. If you've never been in combat, it's hard to explain to people, how frenetic and chaotic combat can be. You don't get a red pip that highlights, where the enemy is. You don't have a radar. You don't get a notification, that your shot hit its target. You hear bullets WHHRRT past you, smack into something near you, ground slash wall slash tree slash vehicle slash etc. And you get behind cover. You then start yelling to your squadmates about where you collectively think the incoming fire is coming from. Sometimes it's obvious, but usually it's not. You're even more fucked, if you're in an urban slash semi-urban setting where there are non-combatant civilians running around, worse still when you simply can't tell the difference between the two. You're trying to not die. You're trying to leave cover, acquire a target, shoot that target, and then get back behind cover before someone sees you and shoots you. This does not leave a whole lot of time for pondering how old your target is, what their motivations are, or how long they've been a soldier. Mix this in with the kids, who would run around trying to pick up brass in the middle of a firefight, and it's just a hot chaotic mess. I didn't want to die, so I shot back. Most people who have been in combat will tell you something similar. 
I wouldn't say it was unique, because every day in itself was always something new and the child may not have been a soldier. I was the medic riding in the back right seat of a Humvee back in 09. I saw a child about 10 plus slash minus 2 years of age from the back seat of his parents Mercedes which was at my 3 o'clock, point and 9 millimeters at my gunner, whose fire sector was to my 9 o'clock. I immediately open my window and aim my M4 and let the convoy know what I'm seeing. Gunner's turn and a shot came from the Humvee in front of me, and hits the car. No one was hurt. The reason I didn't fire, is because I could see, that he didn't have the instinct to pull the trigger. Had he been several years older, and carried himself more, like he knew what he was doing then I'm positive I would have been the one to fire, and it wouldn't have been the car, that would have been hit. I was deployed in Afghanistan from 2009 to 2010, and again in 2012 with the US Army. Due to the nature of my deployments the first one was much more kinetic and that's where most of my personal encounters with the enemy happened. A lot of the people we fought were teenagers, probably from 16 to 19 years old. So some of them were children by the US definition. But over there people grow up a lot faster. Everyone I dealt with was trying to kill me, so I don't feel any remorse about shooting back at them, or dropping mortar rounds on them. I never had to deal with younger kids being a threat or anything like that thankfully. And honestly, myself and everyone I knew generally really liked the little kids over there. They were usually sweet and nice, and always asked for candy and gum and stuff like that. And even when those little shits would throw rocks at our trucks it was hard to blame them, not much else to do for fun around there. Not a soldier, but my stepdad was a paratrooper in the special forces. It took me several years to get him to tell me anything about the combat he had seen during the Gulf War. His first kill was a child around the age of 8. Stepdad was in the back of a convoy holding rear position. They stopped for some reason, I never asked, and the child came running at them from behind. He was naked, except a thick vest, and had a grenade in his hand. Stepdad told him to stop over 10 times. The boy's father was watching from a nearby building. Still messes him up, and he goes to therapy three times a week. War is hell. My brother was in Iraq during early slash mid 2000s, when things were really whack. Said he was on gate duty one night and a kid walked up with an MRE trying to get the him, and his buddies to come up to the gate. Obviously none of them got up, because they had MREs of their own but long story short the kid blew up from an IED they had put in the MRE bag the kid was holding. He had a couple other stories, but the shit he saw was enough to make a hardcore atheist find Jesus so IDK. We don't talk much now, but if you're reading this M, I love you man. Not really the same thing, but this question reminded me of something I read in Stars and Stripes while I was deployed. Some army unit was doing daily patrols through some shithole town I can't remember the name of. They did this patrol every day and the locals got to know them pretty well and didn't seem to mind and the kids in town would run alongside the convoy and beg for candy. A bunch of soldiers started tossing them stuff from them res. It was a hearts and minds type thing I guess. Anyway one day, while on this routine patrol an IED ripped through the convoy, while it was stopped, and a bunch of kids were gathered around. I can't remember the exact numbers, but I think like maybe 4 soldiers were either killed, or wounded and something like 20 or more kids were killed. I know it was a pretty high number and the first thing I thought was godam, this village just lost like 20% of the kids that live there. I wasn't on this convoy and I don't know anyone who was, but I had been on the same sort of mission dozens of times, and could easily place myself there. I saw kids get killed by insurgents and allies, but I never saw a mass casualty situation involving little kids like this. We had a kid, maybe 8 to 10 years old, walk by one of our vehicles with a woman. As soon as he was alongside of the truck, he took out a grenade and tried to throw it on top of the truck. Mind you, these trucks are about 9 foot tall. Grenade bounced off the armor and back at the kid. Killed him and the woman. I wanted to feel sorry for him, but I really can't. I'm sure an adult told him to do it, but that could have killed me or one of my brothers. <laughs>